Hello and welcome back to another episode of Real with Ryan. This is going to be a split kind of video podcast episode, so it will be playing both on Spotify as well as YouTube and other sources. Uh, but this episode is going to be a little bit different. Today, I am going to do a Q&A, my very first Q&A session. So I have a lot of different media channels from TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, podcast, etc. And over the past few weeks, I've been asking people to ask me questions. Uh, so various questions from various people from various channels, all about things that people might just be curious about. So what we're going to do is I've compiled a list of all of those questions from people. I'm going to go down that list and I'm going to answer some of the questions that have popped up. Uh, I've also collected some questions from my girlfriend, from family members, as well as I've thrown in a few questions uh, that I'm even asking myself. So this is going to be a pretty casual episode recording this the day after Thanksgiving. So hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Um, but without further ado, let's take a sip of coffee and then hop right into the questions. I guess before I do that, uh, let me say, if you do want to engage with me more, you always can leave comments on YouTube if that's where you're watching, if you're watching the video here. Um, I would appreciate a subscription and likes and, and things like that. But you can also engage with me on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or really anywhere else. Um, Instagram is probably going to be your best bet. That's where I'm most active. That handle is at I'm.the.ryan. That's where I'm doing stories and posts and most active on a day-to-day basis where you can uh, contact me. Uh, but I'll have those links below um, and I'll put those handles up here for a little bit. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let me take another sip of coffee and get into some of these questions. So we'll start off uh, with uh, the first handful of people that asked me questions. I wrote down kind of their their tags, and I'll shout them out. Um, but then I unfortunately got lazy and stopped uh, writing down everyone else's. Uh, but let's start off with the first question. And uh, this is from Casty Holen on um, Instagram. And they asked, where am I from? So I am from northwest Arkansas. Uh, specifically, I live in a town called Fayetteville. Uh, it's where the University of Arkansas is located, um, and it's one of the big cities or bigger towns within the greater northwest Arkansas region where I was kind of born and raised and, and really grew up. So Fayetteville has the University of Arkansas. Uh, that's where I went to college and graduated, so the Razorbacks, if you're into college sports. Um, went to business school there and am now uh, a homeowner and living in Fayetteville. That's where I live, where I work. Um, love being here. So I was born in Rogers, Rogers, Arkansas, uh, which is another one of the, the kind of four major towns that comprise uh, Northwest Arkansas. Uh, lived there for a handful of years, moved up to Wisconsin for a while, lived there for about four or five years, not a too long. And then whenever I was around six years old, moved back to Rogers, lived in Rogers, went to Rogers High School um, until I graduated and went to Fayetteville, a few towns over for college. I uh, graduated Fayetteville, bought a house, and then am now living in Fayetteville. So a Northwest Arkansas native. Uh, I love it here. It is amazing. It's got kind of all of the amenities you would expect from a city, um, but with the size and the nature and the access of almost kind of a small town. So really excellent place. If you are ever swinging through Arkansas, uh, Northwest Arkansas is the place to be. Of course, it's the home of Walmart and Tyson and some other places like that, kind of like a mountain biking capital of the world even. Um, and then there's a lot of art and good food and nature and lakes and adventures to be had and, and some really cool people and culture. So Northwest Arkansas, great spot. That is where I'm from, kind of born and raised and living there now and plan to live there for at least a while longer. Um, but thank you for that question. Okay, so here is a question from my stepbrother, Wes. Thank you, Wes. Um, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years, both professionally and personally? Um, so that is a really good question. Um, thank you for asking. Uh, so one thing I will say is lots of people, I think, view me as someone who has 
you know, a plan or a vision or a goal, or like I could say where I see myself in, in five to 10 years. Um, you know, I, I actually don't have that much of a set kind of objective vision goal that I'm, that I'm striving for or hope to see myself within 10 years. Um, but there are probably a few things that I can say um, to that question. So one of the things I do is I don't necessarily set kind of goal or endpoints. So, you know, I, I'm not going to say in 10 years, you know, I'm going to have a business that's doing a million dollars and, you know, four kids and have a five bedroom house and be a millionaire, whatever those goals might be. So I'm not someone that kind of picks those specific things to shoot for. Uh, but I do kind of set myself directional goals. And so directionally speaking, I want to lean into media and I grow media. Um, and directionally speaking, I do want to, you know, end up making more money. I, I feel comfortable now, but of course I'd like to make a little bit more. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to travel and in 10 years, you know, likely have a family with some number of kids, um, as well as just get more and more freedom. So 10 years from now, I would like to, you know, essentially be my own boss and, and have my media and my own business ventures be the things that are putting money on the table. Um, so I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. And it's not like I have like set goals, but I kind of know the direction I want to go in. And that is getting more freedom uh, unlocking some more financial stability, uh, being able to raise and support a family and have the free time and the ability to do that really well and spend time and raise kids really well. And then just along the way, learn, keep learning, build my media and hopefully spread some of those lessons and the knowledge that I accumulate. Um, so that's kind of the direction I see myself going and, and, you know, that's kind of where I will be thinking on in the next year and hopefully 10 years of doing that one step at a time, you know, I'll get somewhere uh, hopefully significant with that amount of time and effort. Um, but good question. Thank you. Um, here is a, another question. So this is from Aston Ridge, um, 1117 from Instagram as well. Uh, one out of 10, how much do you love your dog? Well, I have three dogs, Ollie, Bruno, and Kaya, and I love them so much. Got to be a 10 out of 10. Um, you know, they're part of my family. I see pets as family. Um, you know, dogs have always been a really important part of my life. Uh, I was an only child uh, between the ages of zero and like 12. Um, so I don't have any blood siblings. Um, you know, my mom and my dad only had me. Uh, they did end up splitting, and I did end up getting some stepbrothers, three stepbrothers, um, who uh, married into my mom's side, and so they came around whenever I was around 11 or 12, um, who I love a ton, but I did have that kind of only child upbringing from zero to like 11 or so. Um, but while I was an only child, we always had dogs around, and so there was almost always two to three golden retrievers running around the house. Um, I had a ton of exposure to dogs growing up. They are basically like my siblings. And so that's kind of where I got a lot of the background kind of knowledge and just may, mostly like intuition around dogs. So just growing up with them, uh, you know, I'd spend more time with my dogs than I did other people because I didn't have siblings and, you know, my parents were always busy. So lots of times I would just be alone uh, hanging out with, with some dogs. And so I learned how to communicate with dogs really, really well. Um, and I didn't realize that until I kind of went off to college and started training some other people's dogs. And then, you know, kind of realized later in life that, wow, I, I kind of developed this gift from being an only child grown up, growing up with dogs. So love dogs. They're part of the family. 10 out of 10. I love them all a ton. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, here's another question by uh, my stepbrother, speaking of, uh, Wes. So he says, you know, kind of to follow on to the first question, he said, where would you see yourself professionally in, in the next 10 years or so um, and personally? And then what steps do you think are crucial for long-term goals? 
Um, so I alluded this to this a little bit. Um, I said, hey, I'm not necessarily someone to set very specific long-term goals, such as I want to have a million dollars, I want to have X house, I want to have X job, um, I want to you know be in X position. You know, I I don't really set those types of goals. I do think if you know what you want very specifically, um, so let's just say you want to be a a neurosurgeon, um, for example. Uh, you can very much set yourself the goal to be a neurosurgeon in 10 years. And that is the objective. Or if you want to become a governor, or if you want to, you know, even do what I'm doing and become a YouTuber, you can set yourself a goal of, I want to have 200,000 subscribers or 100,000 subscribers, something like that. The thing is, is I feel more confident in my direction rather than different endpoints that I can set. So kind of how I view it is as long as I'm moving in the direction that I wish to be moving, I'm moving in a way that my life is happy and I'm fulfilled and I'm just starting to just chug along. I don't know where I'm going to end up, but I kind of know exactly how to get there, which is just one step at a time in a way that feels right. Um, so. I think that's something that I would say. I understand that's probably not going to work for everybody. So as as far as uh, setting long term goals, um, you know, I think it's important to just constantly be questioning and thinking about what it is that feels really good for you, what it is that you want to be doing, what it is that you want to spend your time doing, and what are the things that you can consistently do over time. Um, all of those are really important questions that everyone's going to have unique answers to. Uh, but I think a huge part of life is just trying to figure out what really gets your, gets your fire lit, uh, what motivates you, what feels really good to do, and just slowly march in that direction and try to start to bend the arc of your life towards the things that you really want to do and have the energy to pursue. So that's going to look really different. Um, so short-term goals are, I think, more important than long-term goals here. Um, so whether that is setting yourself the goals of like working out or getting healthier or organizing parts of your life, I think it's really important to set short-term goals that you can kind of challenge yourself and complete. And I think setting tons of short-term goals and hitting those short-term goals again and again and again are actually going to be a lot more beneficial than setting one super long-term goal unless you are very confident that that long-term goal is what you actually want. Um, so a little bit of a rambling answer there, um, but hopefully that is helpful. Good questions though. Okay, here are some more questions. Um, here's one. Uh, why have you been so interested in golf lately? Uh, to which I am, I am guilty as charged. I have been almost obsessed with golf lately, and it kind of hit me out of nowhere. Um, it is a little bit shocking. So let me kind of rewind. Back whenever I was a kid, you know, my dad played golf, and he still does play golf, and he's an avid golfer. I think he golfs once a week pretty religiously. Um, but whenever I was kids, let's call it, you know, between the ages of eight and 12 or so, um, my dad tried to introduce me to golf at that time. And so he got me a little kid set of clubs. Um, and he brought me out even whenever I was like five years old and we played some and, and kind of, I, I enjoyed that process of playing with my dad, but I was a wild child. I was full of energy. I loved to run around and move around and scream and whatnot. And golf for me at the time was just a little too slow. Um, so I didn't quite have the patience. And so, you know, played a little bit as a child. I mean, whenever I say a little bit, like, you know, might have taken like one or two lessons, a uh, little group kind of kid lessons, summer, summer camp kid lessons, and then played with my dad, uh, maybe like nine, nine holes, maybe 18 holes total. Um, so then, you know, I just wasn't interested. I loved to run. I played soccer, played baseball. I ended up picking up tennis too. 
Um, but then, you know, fast forward, um, you know, I, I had my own set of clubs. That was my dad's old clubs. Um, so whenever I was in high school, he ended up getting, you know, um, new clubs for himself. And so for a, a present, he kind of gave me his last set. So I, I, I had my own set of clubs, uh, but I just never used them. Uh, every now and then, maybe once a year, I'd go out to a driving range or maybe I'd meet up with some friends and and like play nine holes or something and, you know, just goof around, but never really, you know, got into it. Um, then once COVID came, I had some more time on my hand. I ran triathlon. Um, and as part of that training process, every once in a while, I just needed to do something that was a break from running, swimming and biking. Um, for four months in a row, it was like every day was run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike. And so I feel like I needed to just get something in there that was a little more chill that I could do. And so that's kind of where I started picking up the clubs and swinging again. Um, so during COVID, I was able to go to a local nine hole golf course. Um, and they, the people who were working there were really, really cool. And if I showed up after 5 p.m., um, I could just walk in and say, Hey, do you mind if I walk the course? And they would just let me go for free. So that was awesome. So over COVID, I was able to play maybe not a ton, but maybe five or six rounds of just free golf as long as I was willing to walk. And so that was a, a, a little spark of like, Hmm, this is enjoyable. I I'm starting to like this as at least as a break. And then, you know, skip a year or two, we come to this last summer and I played a couple more times and, I, you know, just out of nowhere, I think I saw a little bit of improvement um, in my game and that improvement, I probably hit a couple just really good shots and that feeling of improvement of seeing a really good shot was just like, you know, a huge dopamine kick in the butt and I got hooked. Um, and so I would just really have the type of personality where I love to learn and learn as much about anything that I can. And golf is really cool in that way in that I started off sucking, but I could see myself improving. And so you literally can go out one day and suck and then you know watch some videos do some practice go out the next day and through the score on the golf card see yourself getting better and and through the shots that you pull off can visibly see yourself getting better so it's that instant you know effort to reward that happens and so you put in effort you get that reward that's super addicting and you can see yourself improve and so right now i'm i'm in that kind of improvement cycle and just really enjoying it um, it's a really good way for me to relax to have some time on my own i've been meeting up with some buddies and playing and i've just been enjoying the process of learning about golf and getting better um, so that's kind of why i've been addicted to it recently and and i just got some new golf gear. Um, I'm kind of a gearhead, unfortunately, and can spend a lot of money on stuff really quickly. Uh, but I, I really, really enjoy it and definitely plan on playing more golf. And I think it's kind of like tennis that I play. One of those things that learning how to do it earlier on in my life will mean that I can do it for the rest of my life and really enjoy it. So that's kind of the answer in golf. I, I probably went too deep into that one. Um, Okay, but moving on, next question. What do you eat on a daily or weekly basis? Um, so this is a question that comes from Instagram. Um, Instagram's really going to be where you can see my daily stories. This is where I'll post pictures of all the stuff that I'm cooking, videos of the things I'm cooking, basically what I'm eating. Um, so diet and exercise is a really big part of my life. Um, I do my best to cook good food, cook food often, eat good food. I love food. I love cooking. Um, and I try to keep things more or less healthy. Um, kind of depends on the diet and what I, my exercise goals for the season. Um, but on a daily to weekly basis, things kind of change a little bit. So right now, uh, I, it, it's, you know, November, I'm in a bulking season, meaning I'm trying to gain weight, gain muscle. 
Um, so really I'm eating anything and everything. There are no restrictions. So, you know, I'll get up and have breakfast. Uh, the best breakfast I have right now is, you know, either leftovers from the day before. So, you know, today's the thanks day after Thanksgiving. I had steak and mashed potatoes and stuffing. Um, so I'll eat kind of whatever. But another breakfast I might have is, you know, four or five eggs and a couple slices of toast. Um, get some protein and carbs in. The other breakfast I have is protein oatmeal. So a big old bowl of oatmeal with a, pro- a scoop of protein powder, some raisins or bananas uh, in there. Um, then my lunch times are usually just leftovers from the night or the day before. Um, I eat a lot of leftovers, but if I have to scramble and put something together, I do have a few frozen type meals that I can do. So like taquitos or something. It's mostly about in this current season, mostly about just getting lots of calories in. I just need to get a lot of calories to sustain my workout and and muscle growth. And then for dinner, that's where uh, me and Emily will cook. Um, I do a lot of cooking. Emily cooks as well. But it really is just whatever uh, is is I'm kind of feeling for that week. So there's a few staples that we fall back to time and time again, which is Asian marinated chicken thighs. So we marinate chicken thighs um, and then we'll air fry them and, and have that with rice. That's super, super easy and also super healthy. Basically, you get a pack of chicken thighs, you marinate it in a in a bag and you just pre-make that marinade and you can put that bag of chicken thighs and that marinade in the fridge and then whenever you need a meal you can just pull out those chicken thighs put them in the air fryer for 16 15 16 minutes and then you have just unbelievably delicious unbelievably healthy chicken thighs ready to go so that's kind of the go-to staple um, that we fall back on. Uh, but then, you know, I kind of follow my hunger. So, you know, I might have burgers or steaks one week. Uh, we'll have salmon and rice, you know, do a variety of different vegetables. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll do sweet potatoes or cooked potatoes. And then sometimes I'll go crazy. I'll make curries, I'll make stews, um, you know, pork chops, chicken wings. I kind of just follow homemade pizza. I follow whatever my, you know, culinary interest might be for that given week Um, and usually cook uh, two meals or so a week plus the chicken thighs. So we kind of have three staple meals a week and we always cook in not bulk, but cook excess. So if I cook on a Monday night, I will have uh, that meal for me and Emily Monday. We both will take those leftovers for work the next day. Usually we'll have left those same leftovers for dinner that following day. And then usually by, you know, that third day, it's either time to make something new um, or that's usually when I eat the last of the leftovers and Emily starts, uh, you know, cooking or making something new. So that's kind of what I eat. Of course, um, that changes from season to season. So to give you an example, whenever I am doing a cut or losing weight, I might do intermittent fasting. Uh, or, you know, I might go onto the slow carb diet where I, you know, eat a lot of beans. So I basically take out all sugary carbs or, you know, breads, milk, um, rice, potatoes, etc., grains, pastas, take away all those things, replace those with beans, um, and then still eat meat and veggies. And that's what I use. Uh, that's the diet I use to lose weight. Um, so that's kind of what I'm eating. It changes, but I love food, love cooking. Uh, my diet changes a lot, but I try to keep it pretty healthy. And uh, one thing I will say is I, I cook, we cook 98% of our meals. So across any given month, I might eat out. Um, that includes fast food probably two or three times. And so usually we'll have, you know, around one, sometimes two dates in a month, me and Emily. And then, you know, I'll, I'll end up grabbing, you know, fast food, whether I'm out doing errands or just need some sort of pick me up at some point, um, you know, one to two more times in a month. So, uh, almost all of the meals we have are at home and they're home cooked meals. Um, so I love that. Okay. Moving on. Uh, what do I do on my days off? Okay, well, days off um, is going to be a day like today. So technically, today is a day off. It's a holiday. Um, basically, what I do is follow my in, inner. Pff, what I do is follow my interests and my energy. And so, on a day like today, 
I woke up and I am feeling really good. So I woke up, uh, made breakfast, have my coffee, and I'm feeling energetic. So, uh, you know, what I was interested in doing is recording this Q&A session. Uh, perhaps after this, I'll do a little bit more video editing. Um, and then what I'll do is go and work out. So there's a few things I always like to do. I really like to get my workouts in. I enjoy working out a ton. Love the progress that I'm seeing with working out. So that's almost always something I do on my day off is, is get a nice workout in. And usually I have more time to take it easy in the gym or take a longer time in the gym or play basketball in the gym. Just have a nice long time, leisurely time, enjoy myself in the gym. So I do that. Uh, I almost always try to do some sort of creative work. So that'd be something like this, this Q&A or video editing or recording videos or doing something else like responding to clients. So I make ad videos for clients. Um, and so I'll do some of that client communication on the days off as well. And then sometimes clear email, things like that. Um, besides that, I, those are kind of the you know, things that I will do, you know, personal work wise. Um, but then, you know, depending on the state of my house, I love when my house is clean. So I might also do a little bit of light cleaning, say vacuuming, cleaning up kitchen, things like that, making sure that my house is just looking good, feeling good. I, I love when my house is clean. It's, it's one of the best feelings for me. And then everything else is just kind of icing on the cake. So, um, that's where I might play golf or I just follow where my energy and curiosity leads me. And so if I have a lot of energy, I might go out and I might, might mountain bike, or I might go on an adventure, or I might just go and play golf alone, or I might try to wrangle some friends together and play golf with friends. Um, you know, I might go out and me and Emily might go shopping or go on a, an adventure and a date, uh, take the dogs for a walk, um, just kind of following what I'm feeling. And then usually towards the evenings on days off, you know, I I'll, you know, also might do some big cooking. So I might bake rolls or some other more time intensive cook, uh, on a day off. Um, and then towards the evening, usually, you know, start winding down, might cook something, have something for dinner. Uh, and then usually on a day off, as long as I have the next day off as well, and then I might have a few drinks, so maybe a couple beers, a you know, a little fashion, a glass of whiskey or two, um, and usually play video games with my friends uh, at night. And so that's kind of my favorite activity. Maybe I'd watch a movie, but I like to do things kind of actively. So video games is one of those things. Um, so lots of the times on you know a Friday, a Saturday night, by you know 9 p.m. or so, I'll kind of like wound down from the day and go and play, you know, Call of Duty or League of Legends or something with my group of friends and have a couple drinks. So that's kind of a day off. Um, you know, all of those days look a little bit different, uh, but they really follow the same structure of following my energy, following my interests. I do get things done. I enjoy getting things done. I enjoy this type of creative work. So I include that in there. Um, and that's, you know, one thing I will say, that's kind of my dream kind of day in dream state. And so I'd love to get to a point in my life where this is my day, basically every single day, where I can get up, I do creative work like this in the mornings that ideally would sustain me as far as income goes, and then I'd be able to work out and then go and do other fun stuff throughout the day. Um, that's kind of the dream. So we'll see if we can live it. Okay. Um, you know, similar, kind of like along those lines, uh, do I have a real job? <laughs> um, yes. Yes, I do. I have a day job. Um, I work in sales at a company called Field Agent. Um, you know, it's a full-time job. They're here in Fayetteville. I am very lucky that I kind of work both in and out of the office. Um, most of the times I'm working from home. Uh, I do sales for them. So most of the times my job is on the phone or specifically Zoom calls with clients. And so I'm able to do that from home really, really well. And I almost do that type of work from home in front of my, you know, camera setup better than I do in the office. So I can, um, you know, work really well from home. And that is, you know, Monday through Friday, 830 to five. Um, so that's my day job. Really great job. Uh, really happy about it. 
Um, you know, if, if people from field agent are watching they're they're great. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the thing that I do for the rest of my life. Um, but they do give me the flexibility to have the energy remaining to do things like this, uh, to do this type of creative personal work. Um, so yep, I do have a day job. It does put money and uh, food on the table for me, which I'm super grateful for. Um, and hopefully, uh, as my channels and media and stuff like that grows, uh, I'll be able to step away from it at some point. Um, but definitely enjoying the day job now. Okay. Uh, what supplements do I take? Uh, all right. Well, as far as supplements, you know, I mentioned I'm pretty big into health and wellness. I'm not like a health and wellness freak. Um, but I do pay attention. I do try to learn about that and stay happy and healthy, etc. Um, as far as supplements goes, I have a pretty minimal supplement routine. Um, my really big focus, you know, I have kind of two big focuses. The first is getting exercise and working out. That's focus number one. I basically want to do some sort of movement every single day, typically heavy lifting, but sometimes cardio, sometimes stretching, sometimes playing sports. But basically, I want to be active all the time. And I love being active. It's really easy for me because I just enjoy it so freaking much. It's one of the things I look forward to the most each day. That's thing number one. Number two is just eating well. And so trying to make homemade food, which I do, trying to have balanced meals. So, you know, protein, carbs, vegetables, um, and having kind of like a well-rounded diet is the other big focus. Um, between those two things, that honestly covers almost all the boxes that you need for, for proper health and wellness. Um, now, there are, are been times that I have taken things like multivitamins and stuff like that, um, but right now I'm not taking any sort of multivitamin. If I felt like I had the extra income, I would take Athletic Greens. Uh, so Athletic Greens, if you're watching, I would love to try your products. I just can't quite afford them right now. Um, so I would take athletic greens or a green supplement, something like that, if I did have that extra income to afford it, but at the time I do not. Um, besides that, let's talk a little bit about other types of supplements. Um, as far as sleep goes, I used to take melatonin. I have stopped doing that. Um, I have learned uh, mostly through the Huberman podcast, you know, taking melatonin uh, over the long term is probably not the best. You're just super loading your body with melatonin. It probably... Uh, inhibits your ability, your body's ability to create melatonin naturally ongoing. So I try to limit that. Uh, every once in a while, I will take some magnesium uh, supplements to to help sleep, but not a ton. Um, no daily vitamins or anything like that. At least for the time being. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll take some multivitamins. Um, other than that, workout supplements. I do drink a lot of protein, so protein powder, whey protein. Um, yeah, I'll do that after workouts. I'll have that with my oatmeal, et cetera. Uh, and then creatine. And so I do creatine after workouts as well. So basically the two big supplements is creatine and protein. Um, other than that, nothing crazy. Like I said, if I had the extra income for it, I would do a green supplement, kind of like athletic greens. Um, but really I just focus on exercise and then kind of a well-rounded diet. And then kind of the third thing on there is just making sure that I sleep enough. Um, so those three things kind of cover the boxes really well. They kind of mean that I don't have to go crazy about supplementation. Okay. Um, will I ever do dog training sessions again? Um, <clears throat> so the answer to this is likely no, at least not in person training sessions. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did own my own dog training business. It's called positive pup. Um, where I taught people to taught people how to teach their dogs. Um, so it was all one-on-one -on -one sessions. I would love to show up to clients' homes, um, see what their environment is, and give them the tools, tips, and tricks to teach their dogs and be good dog owners. So that'd be anything from, hey, let's let's do this first basic session. Let's teach your dog how to sit. Let's teach stay. Uh, let's give you a few tips on what you can do around feeding time. Let's give you a few tips about how to leave treats. Let's figure out what your dog responds well to. Is that praise? Is that play? Is that toys? Is that attention? Is that treats? Let's figure out the tools you can use to train your dog and just communicate with your dog better. And so 
I really enjoyed doing that. Um, you know, that, that was my dog training business for, you know, probably two years I was running that and doing those in-person sessions, um, which was really fun. I'm, I'm glad that I did it. It was just so time and energy intensive, um, you know, scheduling with clients, showing up to their houses, doing an hour long session, um, you know, going back home or sometimes doing back to back sessions is a, it, it, it takes a lot of energy and I'm what I call a mid introvert. And so I've got kind of this outgoing persona when I'm around people, I can kind of play that extrovert game a while, but being with other people does end up draining me pretty, pretty hard. Um, so I'd find that if I had a whole bunch of dog training sessions in any given week, the first few would be great. Um, after, you know, let's call it the fourth or fifth in-person session, then I start to get a little bit tired. And if I had anything, you know, more than nine or 10 sessions a week, I would find that those in sessions just would be really, really tough for me to do. Um, so with that being said, I likely will not do in-person sessions again, um, every once in a while, I'll help someone out uh, who needs it. Uh, but I do give a lot of dog training tips on both Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. I'll continue to make shorts uh, with dog training content. I, I'm definitely happy to uh, continue doing that. Okay, let me uh, take a little sip of coffee here. Alrighty, <clears throat> next question. Uh, what workout program do I use? Okay, um, so a good question. Uh, the, the answer really is I have kind of created my own version of a workout program, one that seems to work well for me. Um, it most closely resembles a push-pull legs uh, program or split. And, um, you know, basically for those who don't know, uh, that is a, a weightlifting program, um, and it separates, you know, the week or your workouts into three, excuse me, three main, uh, days. So there's a push day and that's where you focus on movements where you are pushing weight away from your body. Um, so that's going to be like chest. That's going to be like arm extending movements like triceps, um, you can also include things like a shoulder press into that. Um, so pushing movements. Uh, the other part of that is the pulling movement. So push pull, um, where you pull things towards yourself. So if you have your arms out, you're pulling things to you. You're doing perhaps a bicep curl. If you're doing a deadlift, you're pulling things. Uh, sorry if I went away from the mic there. Um, uh, but yeah, a pulling movement and then there's legs. And so of course that's squats, lunges, etc. things working out your legs. Um, so I do push pull legs plus a accessory or a shoulder day. And so this first workout is a push day. I do a bench press and then other chest and pushing accessories. Um, the second day is a pull day. That's where I do heavy deadlifts. I might do hip thrusts as well. Um, and then other that, and then that turns into my back day. And so I might do bent row and other, uh, pull-ups and, and pulling accessories and just focus on my back. Uh, and then I will do a shoulders and kind of arms and abs day. And so I'll do overhead press. Uh, I'll do various types of tricep pushdowns. I'll do curls. I'll do, you know, shoulder movements um, and really focus on my shoulders. I'll do face pulls. Um, then I'll throw abs and stuff on that day as well. And then I do leg day. And so I'll do heavy squats um, and then lunges and then other uh, leg type movements. And so I kind of have those four days. It's uh, that uh, chest day, back day, shoulder and arm day, leg day, and then I just repeat that again and again. And so I'm not super regimented and so in that like uh, my chest day has to be Monday, my back day has to be Tuesday, and then I take a rest day. I kind of just um, every day that I can go to the gym, I just am kind of going through that four workout cycle and just repeating it as needed. Um, now, if there are days where I, I listen to my body, I've been working out for, you know, probably three years or so pretty solidly. And so I've kind of learned how to listen to my body well. And so if there's days where I just feel like I have to, I need, a, I need a rest day. My body is aching. My body is tired. My muscles are tired. 
I will take a rest day as needed. Um, the same if, you know, if, uh, it's just such a busy day, I, I don't have the time to go work out, you know, um, maybe I'll, I'll throw in a run day. And so it's a lot quicker for me to run two miles in like 20 minutes or so than take, you know, an hour and 15 minutes and dress and go to the gym and come back and everything like that. So I'll throw some cardio in there as well, but push, pull shoulders, legs is kind of my workout routine. It's all about lifting heavy weights really and gaining muscle and strength, at least for this, uh, this time in my life. Okay. Um, do I have a budget or how do you make sure you're not spending too much? Um, good question. Um, so the answer is I do not have a budget, uh, which is a little bit surprising. Oh, or maybe not if you see kind of some of my spending habits. Um, but even though I do not have a budget, I am on top of my spending and income more than anyone I, I know, really. I manually track every single dollar I spend and every single dollar I make. And not just the dollar amounts, but what I spend those dollars on, what I make those dollars with. And then I, I calculate and look at that every single week, really. Um, so how I do that is I have a you know Excel file um, that lists out like every day of the month. And then every, you know, a few times a week, I go through, you know, my bank, my credit card ex statements, etc. And I will literally jot down in this Excel file, the, the item or the thing that I bought and how much it cost or where I made money and how much money it was. And I write every single thing down and then I, you know, color code it, I categorize things and then I can run calculations. So I'll see, you know, how much money I've made uh, this month or how much money I've spent this month, how much money I've made and spent this year. You know, if I spend like this month, what will that mean for my spending at the end of the year? Or if I save like this month, what does that mean for my savings at the end of the year? So I take, you know, a weekly and monthly calculations and I project those out. And so I can see, oh my gosh, if I've, you know, uh, ate out a few times this week, dang, that really cuts into my year long projected savings. Or if I, you know, go out and buy some golf equipment, uh, I can really see how that uh, purchase, you know, affects what I'm projected to, to save or invest for the course of the year. Um, so I don't have budgets. I don't say this is the amount of money I can spend on groceries. This is the amount of money I can spend on clothing. This is the amount of money I can spend on house, car, insurance, etc. Um, I just watch it all really, really closely. Uh, I see how much I'm making versus how much I'm spending. And if I do feel like I'm spending too much, let's say I have a month where I spent more than I make, well, then I start to just, you know, crank back a little bit and be like, you know, I spent more than I made last month. Let me ratchet it back. Um, let me not buy this extra golf club. Um, let me see if I can, you know, eat a little more cheap food this month. So, you know, I might do, I might do burgers versus steaks, um, you know, things like that. So I watch my spending and calculate my spending adamantly. I, I love it. I actually love it. I love getting in my Excel file and just, you know, nerding out over those numbers um, and, and seeing everything and, and changing, fiddling, seeing where, uh, you know, uh, I, it, one category of spending a month goes up and down and seeing the various sources of income and, and how those go up and down and, and whatnot. So I nerd out over it. I do not have a budget, but that's kind of how I uh, keep track of my money. Okay, so we're, we're actually winding down. This has been a good list of questions. Thank you, everyone who has asked. Uh, once again, Instagram, at I'm.the.ryan is probably the best way to do that. Um, next question, uh, what is your favorite brand of clothes? Um, so, uh, good question. I would say my favorite brand, well, let me, let me answer this in a few ways. Uh, I'll answer the question directly, and then I'll add a few uh, points of details and context. My favorite brand, if I were to pick one, is Lululemon. Um, I am unfortunately a Lululemon snob. 
It's what I'm wearing. This is the, the, the hoodie I'm wearing is Lululemon. The shorts I'm wearing are Lululemon. Uh, I really, really like Lululemon's athletic clothes uh, specifically. And since I'm always doing a lot of athletic things, I, you know, am almost always wearing a lot of Lululemon. But I also really like how their clothes are both athletic and functional. Um, but they look good too. I, I feel like their clothes are high quality. Um, they get all my athletic needs done. They look really nice. And then I can also wear them leisurely as well. And so it really does check a lot of boxes for me. Um, they're expensive. Like I'm not going to hide that. They are so expensive. And so I don't end up buying a lot of clothes really at all. I'm not a big clothes purchaser. Um, I am very utilitarian with my clothing. And so almost all of my clothing has some sort of functional purpose. You know, this is my tight workout hoodie. Um, it serves the purpose of being a hoodie that I wear to the gym. I get warmed up in and then I take it off uh, and then I will finish my workout and then I put it back on and then I come home. Um, but it, you know, also is a good looking hoodie. So, you know, almost all of my clothes do have a very kind of utilitarian purpose and function and Lululemon fits and checks a lot of boxes for being very utilitarian, um, and giving me the functionality I seek in my clothing. And I'm willing to spend a little bit more to know that it's checking those utilitarian boxes that it is going to last me a long time because I wear my clothes out like no one's business. I do not get the chance to donate any of my clothing because I break my clothing. I am so hard on my clothes. I've never seen anyone else go through clothes like I do. I break it all. Um, every you know single pair of pants that I feel like I own ends up getting holes in it, busted, broken, I don't know how I do it. Um, I guess I just live an aggressive lifestyle, but my clothes just break under me. Um, and so Lululemon's clothes actually have lasted me longer than most uh, clothes. So very functional. I think they're stylish. Uh, they last me a long time. And so they check all those boxes. So they're more expensive. So I typically what I'll do if I'm buying something is I kind of scope out, you know, I go through my closet and say, what... What function am I, you know, failing on? So do I need some sort of winter workout clothes? Do I need a something to play cold weather golf? Do I need, you know, a swim trunk that I'd be comfortable wearing to a water park and walking around all day? Very specific things. Um, but I find what is like the utility in my closet that I'm missing. And then what is the type of article of clothing that can fit that utility? And then I go and search the web for that. Typically Lululemon's, you know, where I'm actually finding those answers. Um, but aside from that, um, other than that, you know, I am not picking clothes at all. So, you know, very specific utilitarian items usually come from Lululemon. The rest of my wardrobe is typically made up by things that are bought from uh, Goodwill or um, thrift stores basically. And so anything that's kind of, you know, fashion forward, um, is something that is a, a hand me down essentially or gotten from a thrift store. Um, so that's where, you know, my, my fashion sense kind of comes in. Um, and, uh, my eye for just like thrifted clothes comes in and I'll be able to get cheap clothes that, you know, I know they're not being, they're not super utilitarian, for example, um, but they're going to look good. And then, you know, occasionally I'll go out and buy some things like Carhartts and stuff like that. So I do like Carhartt as a brand. Uh, that's kind of my take on clothing. Uh, yeah, Lululemon's kind of a favorite clothing brand. All right, I think it's the last two questions. Um, are there any gadgets or technology that you use that you'd recommend people trying? Um, good question. That's, let me think about that for a second while I take a sip of coffee. Okay. So gadgets or technology people could use. Um, I think something that would likely provide the most ubiquitous value to people is going to be some sort of sleep and exercise tracker. Um, I think we most people know the importance of exercise and sleep. 
Um, maybe people don't know quite how important it is, but I think everyone you ask would know it is important to sleep well. It is important to exercise well. Um, with that being said, I don't think people have a very good way of tracking and measuring how well are they exercising and sleeping. Um, and there's never really been great ways to do that, but now we have exercise monitors and wearables that can help you track your exercise and sleep. And so, for example, uh, I use, or whenever I, I am doing my, my real training for triathlons, um, and hard, you know, summer workouts and trying to get in shape and stuff like that, I use the whoop band. Um, so I keep the whoop band on, I use it to measure the intensity and how much I'm exercising, um, my heart rate variability, it measures recovery. And then importantly, it tracks and measures my sleep. Um, and so, whether it's a Whoop band, whether it's an Apple Watch, whether it's an Aura Ring or a Fitbit, um, I think some sort of device that can help you, um, and especially sleep, I think sleep's actually the more important thing here. If you can do things to monitor and improve how you sleep, I think it will improve kind of the rest of your life. And so I really, really did like the Whoop band um, because it would track my sleep every single night. It would show me how many hours of sleep that I got. It would show me how long it took for me to go to sleep. It would show me how many hours or minutes in REM sleep, light sleep, deep sleep, um, kind of give me a sleep score. And then what I would do is log what are the behaviors I did the day before that could be affecting sleep. So did I drink alcohol? Did I exercise? Did I meditate? Was I stressed out? Did I have food past 8 p.m.? Uh, you know, just going down the list or what are the different, did I watch, you know, TV in bed? Uh, did I have screen time? Whatever it is, track those things. And what Whoop can do is after, um, you know, a month or two of tracking data is it can actually kind of show you what are the activities that help and what are the activities that hurt your sleep? And so, you know, this isn't something that you necessarily have to do for the rest of your life, but even having a three to six month period where you wear some sort of sleep tracker and just notice what, are, are you sleeping well? Are you not sleeping well? Are there things that you are able to do and experiment with that can improve the quality of your sleep? Um, and I think sleep is just so, so damn important in that if you can use a tool, a tracker to help figure out how you're sleeping now and then figure out those things you can do or the things that you need to avoid to improve your sleep is something that will improve the rest of your life. Uh, you'll find you'll have more energy. You'll be able to work out more. You'll be able to do better at work. Uh, and you might just, you know, find that you are sleeping better and it's just more enjoyable. So that's the thing. It doesn't really matter what, what gadget you get, um, but some sort of sleep tracker and fitness tracker would probably be the one thing that I would recommend to anyone who is uh, looking to improve their lives and specifically by focusing on improving their sleep um, and measuring their sleep. Okay, this is the last question on today's list, which is perfect because it looks like we're running up on an hour. Um what is your weirdest habit? Um, okay, so I think I have a few weird habits. I'm just going to riff off perhaps a couple of them. The first thing that's coming to mind is my microwaving habit. Um, so for as long as I can remember, I don't know when this started, as long as I can remember, I refuse to microwave things on an even time. So, you know, a lot of people will microwave something for like one minute exactly, or a minute and 30 seconds, or two minutes, or two minutes and 30 seconds, or three minutes, etc. You know, using those one minute, half a minute marks to microwave things. Um, for some reason, I only will microwave things on like strange numbers. So I'll do a minute and 31 seconds, a minute and 34 seconds, a minute and 27 seconds. I'll microwave something for 52 seconds. I refuse 
for some reason to microwave things like on the minute. And I don't know why. And there's like no joy I get out of it either. It's not like I like get a, it's just something I do and I've done it for as long as I can remember. And I will probably continue to do it. I just refuse to microwave things on like the minute marks and you know, there's no reason for it. I just do it. It's weird. Okay. Another thing I do, um, I am a morning singer. I am a, I am a, a being in the morning. Um, so I wouldn't call myself a morning person. It's weird. So I like to stay up really late. I enjoy sleeping in, but as soon as I get up, get out of my bed, I just have this building energy on me in me that, you know, just rises and rises until I just can't hold it. And I start to sing and I sing to my dogs and I play with my dogs and I run around the house and I attack my girlfriend, uh, Emily in a playful way, of course. Um, and then, you know, I just sing and bellow and just make noise and I'm just, just awake. Uh, so I'm a crazy singer. I've very much annoyed family who has lived with me and roommates that have lived with me and my girlfriend that lives with me and dogs and whatnot. I, you know, within probably four minutes of getting out of bed, I just, I cannot hold it in any longer. I have to just make noise. Um, I just have so much energy that's ready to come out, uh, typically whenever I'm waking up. Um, so that's another weird habit. I'm trying to think if there's any other strange habit. I, I feel like there can be a third one. Give me just a second. Okay. Um, I think I've thought of another one. Uh, this actually used to be one of my fun fact questions. Uh, if someone asks, you know, what's a fun fact about you? Uh, the other weird habit is I swallow pretty much every single piece of gum I put into my mouth. Um, <laughs> So that is it. I, you know, I, I chew gum and then I will swallow the gum. Um, I, yeah. And so that's, that's, that's it. That's a fun fact. Um, but okay. Now that we've been talking for an hour, um, uh, I'm going to start to wrap things up here. Uh, thanks a ton for listening to my first, uh, Q and a session. Uh, I've had a blast. I've just been chilling in my office, sipping coffee, uh, reading the questions everyone's uh, asked me, um, some great questions in there and just riffing. So really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said, if you want to engage with me on a more daily basis, um, definitely would recommend checking out some of the various media I have. I, like I said, Instagram's where I'm the most active. That's where I'm doing stories. I'm doing posts. I'm doing polls. I'm asking questions. I'm doing links. Instagram's really where you're going to be able to find uh, the most interaction and engagement and up-to-date information for what I'm doing. So I'd highly recommend checking that out and definitely appreciate that. Uh, you can also see me on TikTok at I'm dot the dot Ryan as well. And I've never really done too much on Twitter, but you can follow me at Twitter as well at distracted underscore Ryan. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I'm, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, spending some time uh, hearing some of the questions and answers. Uh, but other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, enjoy the end of this year if you're watching here in 2022. Um, and as always, thank you for keeping it real with Ryan.